This segment is sponsored by the Richmond Sentinel, providing news, entertainment, and human interest stories in print and online. Rick Dugdale is a Canadian film producer. He is also the president and CEO of Enderby Entertainment, an independent film finance and production company. He's been making movies for a long time, and it's really great for Lita and I to welcome him back. He was on our show literally two years ago, June of 2020, at the early days of the pandemic when we were locked in a studio. He was locked in a studio. But Rick, at that time, you were putting together a film that to us seemed tremendously challenging with the lockdown. It was called Zero Contact. People have been just looking at it now. It's great to welcome you back, Rick, and we can't wait to talk about this film that got done. It's getting great reviews. Good to have you with us. Thanks for having me, guys. It's <laughs> good to be back. Absolutely. Rick, you managed to very creatively, during massive lockdown of COVID, um, create a film that's like nothing else. Tell us a little bit about that and how you accomplished that. Yeah, you know, going into it is extremely ambitious, we thought, but at the same time, we knew we had a lot of crew around the world that were kind of doing nothing. Everybody was dealing with the same issue. You couldn't shoot a film conventionally. And so we had a think tank. We kind of came up with this idea of what would be possible remotely. And we quickly wrote a script that actually started to work. And the story was really working for us. And uh, we put a crew together and said, this is going to make a film all remotely. And uh, it took a while of post-production to, to complete it the way we wanted to, but I think uh, it turned out pretty well. Rick, one of the things that Lita and I loved about this film is that it would be commendable, as she mentioned, uh, the accomplishment of doing this under restrictions. But this film isn't a gimmicky film. Yeah, it's, it's, it's very unique, but there's also a great story. So I, we gotta say congratulations on that as well, because it could have easily just been a gimmick film, and it's not. Yeah, well, thanks for that. I mean, part of it is when Zoom, or sorry, when COVID hit and everyone's looking at Zoom every day, the storylines that you anticipate them coming up with is some kind of horror movie in a box or some contained Zoom-like horror movie. And we figured that's the one thing we wanted to avoid. And really, ultimately, if a film's going to have a life and you're going to find distribution and an audience, it's got to have a story. It's the most critical piece. And so we were fortunate enough to be you know, to have writers in-house and be a very writer-centric company. And so, you know, Cam Cannon wrote an incredible screenplay that really allowed us to tell a great story. And it's a trilogy. We're excited to find out about that. Um, and you shot, you're shooting, uh, maybe you haven't hit all the countries, 13 different countries. Uh, tell us how you managed to do that as well. And it just looks so seamless, the first, the first part anyway. <laughs> Yeah, you know, we started filming in Antarctica in December, and this is about taking an audience to places they don't get to go. Uh, we did it remotely, obviously in part one, but you realize where the story and where it can go is that being a futurist, you know, sci-fi type of thriller, the, the storylines are kind of endless. And so we, we built a part two and part three that would take audiences to places like Antarctica. And yes, so we became the first film to shoot in Antarctica. That's where we started filming in December. The rest of the filming will start up after the summer. We're going to places like Jordan and Egypt and Micronesia and Bolivia and all these amazing places that obviously will screen production value. But it's about taking place people to places they don't get to go. And our storyline will walk the lines of maybe an Indiana Jones kind of thing. But it does start with story. And I think with part two and three, we're going to be able to extend that. I think that's true too, Rick, uh, by the amount of uh, solid acting talent that you attracted, including uh, Anthony Hopkins, who also works with Ben Kingsley. We should give a shout out to our good friend and uh, uh, kind of a friend of the show too, Alex Ponovac, who, well, he's not here that much anymore because he's working all the time. I talked to him the other day and he was on his way to Saudi Arabia. Uh, we should mention um, Zero Contact is, is out on VOD now. Uh, Rick, we, we must ask you about this, and I'm showing my uh, ignorance here when it comes to this world, but this is the, uh, Zero Contact is the first feature film to have an NFT release. Explain that to our audience. Yes, so NFTs are obviously very buzzworthy. That word is very buzzworthy and it's out there. But the reality is, is that uh, when we finished the film and it was unconventional, it made sense for us to release the film in an unconventional way. And so we formed a company called Viewly, which Viewly is the first NFT distribution company out there. And what that means is, is that you, when you buy an NFT, this is a digital collectible. This sits in your digital wallet when you are a member on Viewly. Uh, different than a DVD or Blu-ray, this is something that 
has inclusions inside of it. It's like a DVD with bonus features on steroids. This is something that is fan engagement, it's for the Comic-Con kind of goers. But more importantly, you are part of a, a exclusive group. There's only a certain amount of NFTs sold of the film in perpetuity. And so Viewly is where you buy your NFT film, collectibles tied to the films that it's releasing, and it's ultimate whole new world of film distribution. And we think it's definitely a future for uh, where Hollywood's going to go. Well, this film definitely is creative in so many aspects on so many platforms, and we're super excited to see the, the next two for sure. And uh, we want to say thanks for joining us all the way from Calabasa. Uh, is it nice there right now? It's beautiful. It's hot. We're under a heat wave right now, so yes, oh it's nice and warm here. We want some Rick, of that. Yeah, I was going to say, Rick, that's not fair. Um, we're we're soaking and we're indoors. It's raining in Vancouver. <laughs> oh, it's, it's of course it is. Yes. Um, hey, listen, Rick. Thanks. As Lita said, uh, we'll have all Rick uh, Rick's information in the closing credits and look for uh, zero contact. It is available on VOD now. Rick, it is great to see you again. It's always great to have somebody on a couple years after they were in the early days of putting something together and to see results, which are just fabulous. So, Rick, we wish you continued success. Come back when uh, part two and three are uh, in the can. Yeah, ready definitely. To Absolutely. Thanks so much, guys. Thanks for having me. Thank okay. you. And, hey, big thanks to uh, Leslie Diana, who yes. uh, coordinated and helped to set this up. PR people are a big part of what we do. This segment was sponsored by the Richmond Sentinel, providing news, entertainment, and human interest stories in print and online.